everyone, welcome back to another episode of Benny Has a Problem. Not really, but this is our Problem With series here at Comic Storian. And today I'm going to tell you about the problem with Batman. We're finally doing the problem with Batman. The problem with doing the problem with Batman is there is a lot of problems with Batman when you break it down. So I'm going to warn you now, this is probably going to be one of like 50 problem with Batman videos. But today we're going to be talking about the fact that you can't ultimately change Batman. And we're seeing that right now in Batman comics. Let me catch you up, because a lot has changed for Batman, which is causing the issue. Rolling all the way back to 2011, we had the New 52. Batman came out of the guns blazing, picking up the storyline of the Court of the Owls. This carried on for about 50 issues, resolving with Batman and the Joker having some weird hate-love situation that needed to be resolved. Coming out of that, Batman then moved into a storyline by Tom King called Gotham, in which he dealt with Gotham and Gotham Girl, two brand new superheroes that Batman had to deal with in Gotham. That storyline about Batman being broken down is what continued on for about 80-something issues. The concept behind it was that Batman was going to get his peak happiness, marry Catwoman, finally consider not being Batman, and have it ripped away by Bane and Thomas Wayne. We then move to the end of that series in which Damian Wayne disobeys the commands that were given to him, which leads to the death of Alfred. Following the death of Alfred, we then rolled into the Joker War, in which the Joker, knowing who Bruce Wayne was, decided to take all of his millions and billions away and basically take away Wayne Manor. At some point between then and where we are now, Vandal Savage bought Wayne Manor and discovered the Batcave. On top of all of this, Batman then had to go live in a brownstone where he tried to work with the Bat family to the best of his ability, but discovered that Batman Incorporated had fallen apart and was being funded by Lex. That was a side plot that basically relaunched the Batman Incorporated book. Moving forward for regular Batman, after Joker War, he lost Gotham again to the Fear State. This started to prove that Batman was starting to fail, and Batman didn't quite know what he should do to continue being Batman. Moving forward beyond that, we then get to the point that we are kind of in the storyline of it now. All of the ramifications over the last literally eight years are still in play. Batman has no money. Batman doesn't have the full trust of the Bat family. And we have a situation where Alfred is dead and Damien blames himself. Batman is starting to rebuild his life. The family is starting to trust him again. Damien is willing to come and work with his father again. We're starting to get back to Batman. He still doesn't have his money and Alfred is still dead, but we're dealing with that as a family now. That is until Chip Zdarsky took over in 125. The Penguin, on his deathbed, found a way to get Batman accused of being the one who killed the Penguin. This activated the ultimate failsafe that Batman had made, failsafe. I'm surprised it wasn't called Bat Failsafe. But anyway, Failsafe was awoken. Failsafe was an ultimate robot whose entire purpose was to dispose of Bruce Wayne if he ever crossed the line. It was supposed to be his answer to the Tower of Babel situation. Moving forward, because I've already recapped this particular segment in another video that I think came out last week, Failsafe eventually got implanted with empathy to understand what Batman was going through. He sent him through the multiverse. Batman saw how the Joker was created through a multiversal connection. We come back, Batman has an evil psyche in his head, beginning to take over his body, take over his senses. He battles against the Bat family. That leads into Batman deciding to get a hold of everything and the Joker challenging him. He goes to fight the Joker, and then this evil persona takes over. The evil persona got more powerful as Batman went through the multiverse and met other versions of the evil persona. This led to the evil persona, Zuranar, having enough energy and know-how to take over Batman's body without Batman giving him permission. He used Batman's body to break the Joker's back and then defeat Bruce Wayne and take over entirely. Zoradar then uploaded his consciousness to the failsafe robot, which is now running around Gotham. Batman awoken in a prison in Blackgate where he's talking to the Joker. Talking to the Joker, the Joker reveals that he knew about Batman's dark persona. And then we get the story of Joker Year One, where we discover where the dark persona came from. All the way back in an origin story called Batman the Knight, there was a teacher that taught Batman how to compartmentalize different versions of his mind so that he could have an ultimate Batman, but still be Bruce Wayne, and they would not conflict. Zuranar is that ultimate Batman. Batman, Bruce Wayne, is the one that we've been dealing with. 
This is discovered because the Joker also went to that same teacher and learned how to do it, creating three Jokers. Retconning the origin of the three Jokers so that it's back in continuity because I'm pretty sure that the three Jokers book is no longer in continuity. <gasps> Anyway, we cut back to the mainline timeline where we've discovered that there is a way to compartmentalize different personas within your mind from the Joker, and Batman decides that he needs to get out of here and stop Zuranar. But we've discovered that Zuranar has taken the failsafe body and turned it into truly the ultimate Batman, and has now started a ploy to convince the Bat family that he's actually Bruce Wayne, and he's uploaded his consciousness to this robot. Why? We don't know. That's where we are in the story. I don't know why Zuranar is doing it. The only thing I can think of is <gasps> we go back a few issues. When they fought against the Bat family, Nightwing locked Batman out of the Bat computer so he can't get access to all of the Bat computer things. They did this because they were concerned that Batman had lost control to Zuranar. So the only reason I can think that Zuranar is trying to convince the Bat family that he is actually Bruce Wayne is because he's trying to gain control of the computer again. But fear not, faithful viewer. We all go back to bet Bruce Wayne. He's breaking out of the back black gate. I'm, I'm losing it, guys. I'm losing it. The, the thread is going. The thread is going. We go back over to Batman. He's in Blackgate prison. He's trying to break out. He wraps his face in bandages so that no one knows what is going on. <gasps> And as he's trying to escape, the drones from before attack him and put him back in the prison so that he needs to find another way out. While this is going on, way back in Gotham War, Batman, but Zuranar took him over, injected Jason with a fear toxin drug so that he could not be an effective fighter. A plot point that we thought was going to be dropped and erased because immediately following that... <gasps> The Joker, in an attempt to fight his own doppelganger, injected Jason with Joker toxin to counteract the fear toxin. But, <gasps> I'm running out of breath. <gasps> but, don't worry, Zuranar has told Jason that the fear toxin is still in effect, but Jason is fighting through it, which makes me think that this is going to be a plot point that is going to be very important, and it's going to be happening very soon. Okay, so how is this a problem with Batman, right? Did you follow along with what I said? Because all of that happened and is in continuity and has been going on for about eight years. I put out the video a few days ago, which is the latest issue in which Robot Batman now is in control of Gotham and he's cleaning up the streets and Bruce is trying to get out of the prison. And what the biggest reactions are, there's quite a few interesting comments following that. My favorite of which being, totally saw this coming and I'm like, how? How did anyone see this coming? <laughs> I mean, we all knew that Dark Batman was going to take over at some point, but if you predicted all these plot points, I need to know your lottery picks, man. But what happened is, anybody who was confused by the current state of the Batman comic, because if you watch just that video, you're jumping in at 145 and things are all over the place. There's like a whole army of people correcting misconceptions and answering questions in my comments, explaining everything since failsafe onward, which is the most you know important plot points that are related to this. But everything else is still in play. We still have no Alfred. We still have no money. We're still in the brownstone. All of that is still in play, which made me realize that's the problem with Batman. That is the biggest problem with Batman. You can't do any major changes like this. When it, this started, my assumption was maybe they'll do a true dark Bruce Wayne arc. But then I realized they can't. There had to be a second body for Zuranar to take over. There had to be something like failsafe for him to move into. Because you can't have somebody pick up 145 and it features an evil Batman fighting the Bat family because that wouldn't be what people are expecting from a Batman book. We can't go that far off the rails. When Gotham War came out, a lot of people complained about it. And if you ignore the story problems and stuff like that, the biggest complaint that I saw was that Batman is acting out of character. But he wasn't. Batman was acting like Zoranar was taking him over. But Gotham War barely referenced it with only quick mentions here and there. Meaning, if you were picking up random issues in the Gotham War, you didn't know what was going on. Batman just acted weird. We're now on issue 145, and this started in 125, and it's been going on long enough that it's difficult to understand what is happening in Batman. And I think one of Batman's biggest strengths as a book is you can always leave Batman and come back, and you just need to pick up a few story beats. If you had jumped in at 124, as opposed to this entire robot evil Batman arc, 
then you would have been jumping in and all you needed to know was that Alfred was dead and Damien wasn't working with Batman. Everything else that is ramifications and is happening to Batman didn't matter in the overall plot, which is where a lot of people's complaints come in. Nothing changes in comics. Because it does, but never this heavily. If you've been watching The Problem with Series for a while, I made this exact argument a while ago that we do have changes in comics. They just don't happen that heavily. They're not that noticeable unless you've been reading the comic consistently. But this is why Batman 145, if you jump in now, has a robot Batman conquering Gotham, the Bat family not knowing who to trust, and a bandaged up Batman in a prison cell, all of which are talking to the Joker about evil personas. And unlike Marvel comics that have a blurb in the front to catch you up on all of the story beats, DC doesn't have that. I was just over at Emerald City Comic Con and explaining this insane storyline to one of my buddies in the industry because he doesn't read current Batman. And he goes, how would anyone know that? And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's the problem. And he's like, don't they have a recap in the front of the books? I'm like, that's Marvel. DC doesn't do that. So as if you jump in right now, you're just lost. And if you pick up 144 right before this, it's not pertaining to this because it's a flashback sequence about the Joker. In order to understand what is happening, you need to go read 125 to 141, and then there's a three-issue Joker flashback, and then we're here. Now, I think this works for some of the other works that Chip Zdarsky has done, the writer of this storyline. Daredevil went almost 50 issues, beginning with him thinking that he murdered someone and ending with his own death. Spoilers if you haven't read the Daredevil run from like two years ago. Anyway, <laughs> I think it works better with lesser known heroes. Now, hear me out. I know all the Daredevil fans are going, he is an A-lister, but he's not. He's not on the level of, say, Batman, okay? Daredevil is one of my favorite books. When it was written by Chip Zdarsky, I read every issue of that to see what was going on. It's one of the few Daredevil stories we put on the channel, and we're about to hit its conclusion because I've kind of been spreading out the last couple of videos. They're all on the members only thing, but Daredevil can get away with it because it's not as big of a fan base. You can, when you come back to Daredevil, you will assume you need to go read more Daredevil, but that's not Batman. There are, what, how many books for Batman right now? I think four concurrently going at the moment. Batman, Batman, and Robin. There might still be Urban Legends, and I think there's another one that has just Batman as the primary in the title. I know they just launched Batman First Night. So, like, there's more Batman books. So, to go out and decide, I'm going to read Batman, and you pick up all of these four to seven issues, and then this one, the mainline Batman headline title, is just confusing works against DC, works against what's going on. Now, I will give them compliments because they're working this into Dawn of DC. This ultimate Batman fail-safe Zuran R guy is going to be in the next big event. So they are incorporating this into the overarching plot lines of DC. But again, you still need to know what's going on. We're getting back in the weeds with the comic books, which I love and I also hate at the same time. Because like I said, half of the comments are, what is going on? When did this happen? Or, I totally saw this coming. Dude, you're a better comic historian than me, all right? All right? I saw evil Batman taking over, but if you saw that there was going to be a flashback for the Joker that revealed that there's dark personas in everybody, props to you, man. I didn't see that coming. I was waiting for the reveal of, like, clones or something. I was hoping that Zoranar was going to be, like, a Venom symbiote thing. I, so you, you got me. You win. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's problem with video. The problem with Batman is there's multifaceted, multi-layered situations, but I do think this is one of the biggest ones. Batman can't change too drastically, which just reiterates the point that I made a few months ago. If you enjoy these types of videos, around the time this one comes out, my other channel, Benny Has a Problem, I'm doing a whole video on sexuality in advertising because the game Stellar Blade is apparently a political argument. But we're doing a whole video on that one and would love your support if you could go check it out. The link will be down below. But that's it, guys. That's this week's Problem With. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next week right here at Comic Storian, where I rant to a camera. Hey, everyone. Welcome to The Problem With Batman. I've shifted. Hold on, hold on. Tweak it. Be good. Okay. All right. All right. Streamer mode. Yeah. Oh, funny jokes. Funny jokes. Sex jokes. Oh, too far. Too far. Pull back. Pull back. Okay. Cool. Ah, uh, loud voice. Loud voice. Commanding voice. Here we go. YouTube mode. Here we go.